So good morning, as in every day, we start our day off with gratitude. And uh, I can just say to you that I am just completely grateful for today. It's Friday. I'm excited about the weekend. I'm excited about each and every one of you joining me today. And um, I have a, I hope for you a very, very, um, you know, Zoom that will be effective for you and remind us all of the things that you know we can do to be very very successful in not only our lives but in our business with Miriam. So um, first and foremost, I haven't really had an opportunity to kind of say, you know, everybody on this Zoom for the people that I can track are doing a great job. Um, everybody is really, you know, getting customers, working with their teams, uh, building calendars. Uh, you know, coming back from the convention with lots of excitement and energy and focus. And I just wanted to basically tell you guys how awesome you are for not only contributing to this Zoom and helping all of us to, to build and to do better in our life, but just the intentionality of everything that you're doing as business people and sharing information and sharing all the things that you're doing. You know, I feel like I feel like we're all going to another level, okay? And so today, I kind of just wanted to go over the facts on, on foundation of building a business. And I, I like to do this every once in a while because it helps me remind myself of the things that are most important in building a business, in building foundation, and in any business. And so when I talk about stuff, although we're all, our, our common denominator here is that we're all involved in Miriam. I basically talk about this as a business person who's built several businesses in my lifetime to what I think is pretty successful um, in terms of being able to have a certain lifestyle that I wanted and being able to, you know, enjoy my life along the way. And so the facts of those are for simple terms is just business. Okay. And the first thing that we always start out with is our smart goals. And I think that most of us that have kids, um, we know that when they start in, I think, third or fourth grade now, they come home with a graph kind of similar to this um, with SMART goals. And what education is trying to teach kids early on is how to do goal setting, how to set up your life to be more successful in school, you know, how to achieve better um, study patterns and testing and all sorts of things like that. So they're starting that off very, very early in people's lives now so that as they grow into um, productive uh, adults, these types of, of um, tools will be kind of second nature to them. So, so we remind ourselves that goal setting is specific, measurable, agreed upon, realistic, and time-based. And as a team, as a team leader, as an individual, you want to make sure that whatever you're doing with your team or whatever you're doing with yourself, that you, I think one of the most important parts of these is that when you're figuring out the goal, it doesn't be, have to be a hundred goals, but if it's one goal that you want to do, be very specific about it, you know, and have a measuring stick to it. Make sure that you can measure your results, measure, have statistics on how it's working. Kind of the way we do in this group. I mean, I really look at my team every single month and do inventory and see the people that are on this Zoom on a more consistent basis are the ones who are growing in their business. Um, you need to have an agreed, uh, you know, agreed upon goal. So if you're doing it with somebody else or you're doing it with a team, you have to have people willing to be doing that. And then it has to be very realistic. Um, you don't want to set goals that are so unrealistic that discouragement and disappointment is the number one thing. You want to win. So you definitely want to do uh, realistic goals that that set you up to win, not to fail. And time-based, so there's short-term goals, there's long-term goals, there's visionary goals, there's lots of things like that. And so, you know, for today, we're talking about things that we can do immediately to build our business and build our team. So there's always a game plan, and we've been talking about that since we got back from conference, that, you know, we're all game planning to go to the next level. And for me, in business, I like to start foundationally, you know, and I look at, I look at how this business works. How does, how does any business work, right? We, we know that 
your foundation is the most important thing. So in our game plan, we need our strategy. We need to figure out what our strategy is. But the number one thing about figuring out a strategy is once you've decided what your strategy is going to be, it's, you know, it doesn't work unless you implement it. And so that's where people get into trouble. They might bring in way too many ideas on how they want to game plan themselves and their team. And then they've got so many ideas and that they can't really implement them. So one of the key components, I think, in any successful business is that you, you're patient and that you take one really great idea, you know, put a game plan together implement the idea, track how that's working. And if you need to tweak it or not, that's one thing, but at least you're focused in on what that is and how you're going to achieve it. So the strategy is important. Of course, you want the game plan, but the implementation is really going to be what gets you to the goal. Okay. And so we have the perfect tools to do that. We have the slide edge philosophy. And I think that, you know, for most of us, that have built a team, sometimes we forget, you know, what that really means in mastering the mundane, doing the slide edge, simple things, activities over and over and over, um, you know, until the compound effect kicks in. So going back to the basics really strengthens your foundation. And I think for, for most people that have been building, you know, if you haven't had the success that you want, or maybe your success has gone up and down and up and down and you're trying to get a more even keel, foundation is going to be your savior. It really is. And so that's the thing that I think I've really focused on mostly in maintaining my rank. If not, you know, getting to the next level, I have to, I have to build one person at a time that's willing to do it. I have to build myself and then I have to help other people do the same thing. So if you need a reminder of that, you, you might want to reread the slide edge or you might want to put it in your car on an audio because I think it's one of, one of the most helpful tools in, in the reminder of building a strong foundation. And so as you can see here, you know, anybody that's building a building, um, they have to build their foundation first. So whether it's a small building or it's a skyscraper or it's multi-levels, the foundation is everything. And they spend a lot of time on foundation. You know, they take a lot of measurements. They make sure that there's plenty of, you know, uh, things in there. If there's an earthquake or there's a monsoon or the, whatever the, the, the thing is, the foundation is really what's going to keep your building strong and keep your building in place. And this is really where I like to focus. So I, I share that with you only because you have to have patience building a foundation. And you also, you have to have resilience because sometimes you can build a foundation and you made one small little error and you have to literally take the foundation apart and rebuild it. And I think that it's very common sense theory, but a lot of us want everything fast and furious because we're in a society that wants results uh, the second we, we get involved in something. But business takes a while to build a foundation. And sometimes, depending upon your own personal you know, way of who you are and how you're building yourself, you know, sometimes it takes a while to build the foundation in yourself before you can build a foundation in business. And so some people get very lucky. And I'm not saying that, you know, I was talking about that with Robert yesterday. You know, sometimes people can build their business and you look at them and you say, well, they're not a very nice person or they, they don't really do business very ethically or they, and you see them having success and you think, wow, they're not, they're not the greatest people, but they seem to be doing really well. And you kind of scratch your head and you wonder why. But the reality is, is that that happens. But a lot of times when you see that happening, people, people may go fast, but then they fall very, very hard because they haven't really built their foundation to solidify their building of their business. So I'm going to give a couple examples here and I, I just want you to know these are, are absolutely examples. They're, they're in the perfect world scenario. So it's not, it, it really is not something that I want you to say, oh, well, I saw this on the Zoom, so this is the way it's going to be. This is a perfectly uh, set up 
kind of a business, but the philosophy is what is more important here, okay? So the idea for our strategy is, is that we're gonna take a new brand partner and the idea is we wanna get them paid and promoted. That's the first thing that we wanna do. If we are a good sponsor or we are overseeing a team, we don't wanna be a manager. We wanna make sure that we're implementing leadership, right? And we're developing leaders. So the idea is, is if we can get somebody paid and promoted by a strategy, why wouldn't we continue to build on that strategy and actually perfect that strategy so that we're successful? So the idea is when you get a new brand partner in your organization, of course you wanna be introduced to that person, you wanna make sure that you're doing um, welcome calls and, uh, and you wanna to talk to the sponsor of that person and help them to get that person to build their list immediately. So we have our new brand partner, we wanna immediately get them into building a list. The bigger the list, the better, okay? The bigger the list, the better. So a lot of people say, well, I don't know a lot of people, but you find over the years, you know, here I am five and a half years into Miriam, and you know, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you guys. I mean, I have probably 5,000 people in my phone from my businesses and different things, and I, have, I probably have scratched the surface of maybe, maybe 10%, okay? And I'm just being real here, okay? so. Build your list and schedule your two events. If they're parties or sit downs, it doesn't matter because the goal is in the first 30 days, we want to make sure that person gets absolutely free or free so their product is free the following month and we want to get them customers and brand partners. I can tell you the average the goal, if right? you do two parties, okay, I meant to bring if you do two parties, you are definitely, definitely, definitely going to get. And, and those parties have at least 20 to 25 people. I guarantee you, you're gonna get nine customers for that person. It's math. I mean, I've seen it happen over and over again. It happened with me. I had 35 people in the room and I was, I was um, a senior brand partner that night. But you know, you have to do the implementation of the two events. So if you wanna get somebody there very fast and they're interested and willing and wanna do it, then you get those lists and you get the party, uh, launch parties on the books immediately. If they don't wanna do a party or they wanna do it at somebody else's house, make that happen. It doesn't matter how you get the parties going. The list and the amount of people for going fast is exactly that. It's 30 people, 30, 20 to 30 people averages about nine customers, 10 customers just as the way it is. And you might even get some brand partners out of it. I did, so I know this works, and I've seen it works, and I've implemented it, okay? So you wanna ask the new customers and the new brand partners immediately when they can schedule their first event. So you see how this can really create momentum, right? If you, if you're a brand, if you have a brand new brand partner that starts today, and they're willing this weekend to have a, bring a bunch of people together on Sunday, and they get nine customers or two brand partners or whatever, and you say to those two brand partners on Sunday, hey, is there a time in the next 24 to 48 hours that you can do the same thing, bring like 10, 20 people together over a couple of events? Are you willing to do that? You can see how step by step you're creating momentum in your business. This is how we do it, you guys, and a lot of times, because we've already done it, we've already exhausted what we think is our center of influence. So. If that's the case, if you're feeling that way, it doesn't mean that your business is over. It means, hey, go into your customers and your new brand partners and create the same momentum that you created when you first got started. It doesn't matter what business you're in. We all get to that point. You know, We have to think of things to do. So for instance, when I was in the clothing business with my daughter, you know, I, we went out to every single person we knew to come by fresh and to, you know, they all got discounts to shop. We did parties. We, 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 um, we did charity parties. We did um, wine and cheeses. We did a bunch of stuff to get our name out there, you know. But eventually all of our friends knew about our uh, clothing store. So, so we had to go into their networks. And so what, how did we do that? Did we create a referral business? How did we get people to talk about and broadcast our store to other people? We had to build raving fans. We had to have great service. We had to focus on our customers to make sure that they were building our brand for us. We had to do social media. We had to get involved in networking groups. We had to do the work of creating more synergy into the group. So you have a base of customers already and you have a base of brand partners already in your group. So what I'm saying is 
you're going to build into those networks people's other networks to create this kind of synergy so this is a foundational example of a director and the reality is you guys if we build enough directors in our business every single person can be a national marketing director because well it's just math but I just want to kind of show you that if you were a brand partner so when you look at this you are the brand partner in blue you have a $270 ADO every month and you have nine customers at basically an average of $100 a customer. That's $1,170 in volume. That's you personally as the brand partner. Now you have your three brand partners. So you have to have your three brand partners at least. And you've done the same thing with each and every one of those, just three, just three brand partners. There's nobody else in your organization. You have on average a GQV, of 4680 that is a director with you and only three brand partners what is that that's a lot of customers okay that's a lot of customers so when you're building a business foundationally in Miriam it's all about building customers and keeping them right so when you look at the numbers and you say well you know I don't really focus on customers I really want to build team members I get that I really do but the idea of a foundational business is that everybody has to have customers in this business, everybody. And they have to have customers that want to continue to use these products. So we have to make it valuable. And so when you're, when you're sharing pictures of yourself and you're sharing you know, uh, statistical information and you're sharing stuff about Signum Biosciences, this is a way to create value to your customers to know that they're getting really good products. And this is foundational, guys. So building a director with three brand partners and yourself is totally possible. Now, do you want to build on that? Of course you do. But what I'm saying is customers can take you to every single level in this company. Okay. So now if you go a little farther and you have three brand partners, right? One in each leg that are at the director level that are doing exactly that. They're yourself and three brand partners that all have customers. If you have three of those, one in each leg in a perfect scenario, you're a senior director foundationally. Foundationally, because it's customers and you and your three brand partners, that's foundationally a director, okay? So when you build on that and you continue to build on that, that's in a perfect world. I'm not saying that that is exactly gonna happen, but when you build foundationally person by person you take the time to go to that person and say hey I know I can get you to director if you do these specific things do you want to do that now you know that when you get them their customers and help them with the parties they're gonna make money they're gonna make their money back quickly and if they get their three brand partners and do the same thing they're gonna start getting differentials so everyone's kind of kind of see how this this works on a foundational basis okay but you, you have to have patience and you have to understand that the numbers are just math. It's math. Okay, so look at the graph. If you have three brand partners that all got to senior director, right, because they foundationally built directors, they'd be at 42,120, which is a solid foundational executive director, okay? And again, I talked to you like this is a perfect world, but if you look at the uh, way Miriam has done their comp plan, 60% of the volume can always come from one leg. And I'm going to talk about that in a second. This is if you had a perfect structure, uh, leg one, leg two, leg three. But when you think about how you look at your core group of people, we lose people because we forget about them, because they're not exactly doing everything that we think in a perfect world they should be doing. But if you look at a person who comes in and you actually know, hey, I would really just be happy getting my product for free, you want to say hallelujah, okay? Because if you have one person getting their product for free, that means they have three customers. That, that builds your brand. That builds your foundation. Never, ever give up on those people because that is part of, of building a solid foundation, okay? So this is kind of what, you know, when you look at these numbers, you can see that the math really works. If you have one regional marketing director in each leg, I mean, I'm sorry, one executive uh, director in each leg, you're a regional marketing director. And if you have one regional marketing director in each leg, you're an NMD and beyond. 
the numbers compound. And that's what Jeff Olson talks about all the time. You got to stay in long enough to let the numbers compound and take care of those numbers, okay? So here's another kind of roadmap example. So 60% of a national marketing director leg is 90,000 in group qualifying volume. That makes, there's several scenarios to get to that 60,000. You can have 20 directors in that leg. So if all you wanted to do and systematically build foundation in your organization, look at it from a point of view that if you have a leg that's running, great. You want to build 20 directors as quickly as possible, solid foundational directors. Or you want 7.2 senior directors, or you want two executive directors. And I did the you know, percentages, so you know it's seven senior directors in, in that one leg. It's or, 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 or. So if it's all going to be directors, or you're going to be able, believe me, if you have 20 directors, you've got a few senior directors, okay? And that's the way this works, okay? So the minute you foundationally are helping somebody get to director, that's foundationally helping somebody get to senior director, okay? So if you look at this graph, Look at leg three. You only really need a director in leg three as you're building national marketing directors. So if you have two legs that are running and you're working foundationally, you want to set aside, okay, I, I've only got time that I can only work with these 20 people or that whatever it is you're doing. Just understand that people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year as two stars in this company, okay, because they're built foundationally. And they haven't lost their two star because of that foundation. So it's a very smart way to, to look at your business. Not everybody can build perfectly in every leg, but if you can solidify your organization foundationally, you're going to be able to not only keep your rank, but you're going to be able to build on your rank, okay? So building a foundation with customers is the way to go. I believe that because I believe a number of customers will always become brand partners if they have fun do events and get their products for free and love the products. They're your biggest raving fans. Don't forget about them because they will always, always, always help you build your business. Okay, so that's my talk today. I wanna to remind everybody that you wanna promote your brand partners to the monthly regional training. It's a great way to have community. We need to build up these regionals to get people trained, to get the new people involved in the culture of Miriam, to keep us alive. It's very important as a leader to really, really go into your group and say, look, you got to come with me. You got to spend four hours with me. We got to do this together and have some fun. Okay. So this is ours happening tomorrow. Um, I know it's going to be a blast. And I know in, in summer it's difficult because people are, are, uh, are traveling and all of that. But you know what? We have uh, September, October, November, and December. Find out the dates of the regionals in the next four months in your area and make sure people are committed to going as you build your business, okay? And of course, we have these trips that Miriam puts these in place. Your team upline puts these in place, not because they want to throw a trip out there. They do it because some people are incentivized by going on a free trip and why not it's it's a blast right you're in a beautiful place you're at a beach you've worked really hard and this is a great way to incentivize some people that may not have ever been on a trip like this so i really encourage you if this is something that will encourage someone to have an event or have a sit down or have a three-way call or have any kind of event that's going to make them a foundational director then do it you know, show it to them, show them how they can achieve it, right? We have, we have two great trips to incentivize our people. So basically, you guys, that is my talk for the day. I wanted to make sure that we had this talk uh, on Friday because a lot can happen during the weekend when we're off work and we're able to actually spend time a little bit on our business and really incentivize and help our team to do the same thing. So with that, you guys, uh, I'm sorry it went a little bit long, but I, I wanted to kind of share that information. If anyone has any questions or wants to add to that, I'm very open to that. So I'll open it up for you. Otherwise, that's it, folks. <laughs> Thanks, Scott, Fanny. Thank you. It's foundational. This is awesome. I'm glad you recorded it. Several of my team are going to want to see all this stuff, so it's great. Thank you. Okay, Randy. Thank you. Anybody else have anything that they'd like to share? Thank you. That's just the information I was looking for. Well, that's I copied all your slides, and I'm sending them out to everybody that I can think of. Okay, Carla, that's great. And, you know, guys, just so you know, 
it, those were examples of foundation, but you kind of get the concept if you do the math that really and truthfully getting somebody to director is not as hard as we think it is if they're willing. Okay. It's all about willing participants. So anybody else have anything to share? Is that you, Susan? It is. Thanks, Annie. Uh, no, I just, I love it just getting back to the basics and, and keeping the focus on the customers. I mean, really, just brilliant. So thank you so much. Well, good. That's good. Me too. That's what I really, that's what I know grew, grew our business and, and, and kept it solid was customers. And so we forget about that. But anyway, you guys, I'm really excited this weekend. I know we're all going to have a great weekend. Build, build your team, build your customer base, build your parties, um, and just have a great weekend. And I'll see you guys on Monday. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Annie.